For completing this, I'm going to iterate through the other types of constraints and ways we can use constraints. The, I think the further you go down this rabbit hole, the less useful these are. But you know, they like every tool; they have their place, and and kind of like a dentist drill bit. Why not? Um, okay, we have produce a T, and again, with, this is nothing too new. Class one, I stripped down it. It uh, has a parameterless constructor defined by the uh, compiler, uh, so it satisfies the parameterless constructor constraint. And thus I can call produce a, produce a and pass class 1 there. Notice the build succeeds. Okay, now think of it though. If I say, say I didn't want to new up a T there, I wanted to say, well, let's start with null and do some logic from there on out. Notice that null gets a red squiggly. And the reason why is because T could be a value type or it could be a reference type. If you don't understand the difference between a value type and a reference type, go refer to those videos and brush up on that. But essentially not all data types can be assigned to null. For example, I can't say int i gets null. Right? i is a value type, and since I've defined it here in this, this method of main, i needs to go on the stack. So i can take any value from negative int dot min value to negative or positive or not negative min value, from min value to max value. Okay, But it has to be an integral number, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, Okay, it can't be null. All right, so so the compiler complains in both cases. It's saying, hey, you know, if t is an int or it's char or bool or some kind of primitive value type of struct you defined, uh, this isn't going to work. Okay, so you think, well, let's let's do zero. But then the problem with doing zero is, uh, say, I say class one c gets zero. Well, that doesn't work because C is a reference, and it either has to be null or it has to be referencing a valid object out on the heap. So zero doesn't work all the time either. Well, of course, there's a constraint for that. We can come up here and say where T, um, T is a class. Okay, let's see. Oh, yep, everything seems to be fine there. So now I can say null. Right? And the compiler is happy with that. It says, well, if T is a class, it's a reference type, and thus I know this will always be a reference, and it won't be uh, a, va a primitive value or a value that's, that's going, that requires a non-nullable value. So this assignment of null works. I can build it. Notice it compiles just fine. Now, again, pointing out the differences between value types and reference types, if I come up here and I say struct, well, structs cannot be null. In fact, uh, See, the new constraint cannot be used with the struct constraint because the new constraint is redundant. If you remember, structs always are given a parameterless constructor defined by the compiler. So, so that's superfluous, so we don't need it. And I can say struct, but now structs cannot be null. All right, so that is not a legitimate assignment anymore. But I can't also, I, I can't come in here and say zero because structs, not all structs, uh, zero is a, a okay value for it. If the struct is a complex struct that has multiple data members in it, well, you just can't say zero. What are you going to assign zero and all that kind of stuff? So generics provide a, another nice little feature. I can say default T, which basically means go zero everything out. Okay, T, if it is a struct and it has multiple data members, multiple fields, just do whatever the default value is for all the those data members are and generally it's zero you know, ints are zero decimals are zero char is zero null terminator thing uh, value so anyway notice produce a is not happy because class one uh, is not a struct it's a class if I come up here and make it a struct and again go watch the struct video videos because the behavior is quite different between a struct and a class go watch the videos if necessary but now everything's just peachy we're good to go. The default T also works on uh, reference type, so I can actually take this uh, struct requirement off and say default T. And basically, I, I'm saying give me the default value of T. If it's a reference, the default of a reference is null. If it's an int, the default is zero. If it's a complex struct with multiple data members, then get all the default values for those and, and initialize accordingly. So notice we can build just fine and it succeeds. So how often you'll use these features, I'm not sure. I've found in my professional programming um, generics, I use them in data structures all the time. And once in a while, a method comes up where I need to use t as an argument. But beyond that, adding constraints to it um, 
isn't as necessary. In fact, probably never necessary in any of my cases. But but the feature's there if you need it. Go for it. One last constraint, and this one's even a little more interesting. Say we got a T, a U, and a V. I can say where T uh, inherits U and T inherits V, or I can say V inherits T, or I can do whatever I want out here. Um, why is this complaining? T, oh, I have to say where again, sorry. Yeah, not commas. Where T is U and T is V, and so on and so forth. And now it's like, well, class 1, you need to give me more type parameters. Well, cla class 1, T becomes class 1 in this case, but class 1 does not inherit from int. In fact, nothing inherits from int, nor can it, because int is sealed. But hopefully you see that. Eh, once you start doing this kind of thing, yeah, I, I'm sorry, I'm shedding so much opinion upon you, but but uh, I, I've never really had a use for this. But it's there.